Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Here's your news now. Let's go check in with Greg Stevens and see what's going on in the Holy Spirit Library. On Thursday, February 16th, students, faculty, and members of the surrounding area gathered in the Holy Spirit Library for the opening reception for Christine Palahniuk's reduction. We spoke with Professor Nicholas Schock about his thoughts about the art show coming to Cabrini College. Yeah, no, I think it's a great opportunity for students. Um, having an artist come to campus is nice because students don't have to travel um, to Center City, or they don't have to travel to the Museum of Art down in Philadelphia. Um, it allows the students access to artwork that they may not normally see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think overall for a lot of students who can open their eyes to the type of artwork that people are creating and getting a variety in here I think is really important. Um, not only for the school, because I think it bumps up the school's reputation as far as uh, how the gallery is received. Um, to the public, and it also I think it's just you know a great um, all-around co-curricular uh, event for students to attend, faculty and uh, neighbors as well. So, what inspires me in my artwork is working with light and dark and volume, and they're highly personal pieces. Um, I work in the reverse, which means that I cover my paper in black, so I work from a black field and actually draw with the eraser. Um, it's a technique called chioscuro, um, meaning literally from the Italian light and dark. Um, my my uh, subjects, my models, are people that I know. So they are, in essence, portraits of people that I know, but they're details of those people. For location, I'm Greg Stevens. Back to you in the studio. Let's hear about the Cupcake Wars event that took place in the Cavs Corner. The cupcakes are pre-made. They're all vanilla and they're prepared by Sodexo, so they're going to be made already. Um, the competition is a decorating competition, so the people uh, participating will be the ones icing the cake cupcakes, and they have, can choose between chocolate, vanilla, and cream cheese icing. And there's a bunch of toppings, such as sprinkles, fresh fruit, um, and stuff like that, which will all be provided. So the audience is going to judge the competition. We're going to cut the cupcakes up, either into half or quarters, and they're going to be judged on taste as well as appearance. We go into every event with the intention that we'll be able to do it again and it might become traditional, but since it is the first time and it's a Friday night, that's all up in the air. This group over here is doing a um, caterpillar thing. <laughs> this one, it looks like a musical. Green Day theme. Green, da Green, Green Day. Day. Mm -hmm. Here, heart, yeah, I think they're like doing a heart or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> And then over here they're doing a clown. We made a clown as our big cake and then we made a ninja as our little extra cupcake. And we used um, strawberries and bananas inside the cupcakes. And then on top we used the vanilla frosting and we used food coloring to get the different colors for the hair of the clown and to draw the lips. We also used cherries as the nose and a lot of chocolate chips for the ninja. According to Fox News, gas prices are the highest they've ever been for this time of year. Experts believe that gas prices could reach a record high of four to five dollars a gallon by April. So far this year's prices have risen 11 percent due to tensions with Iran and Europe. The recent improvement in the U.S. economy will suffer due to the raise in gas prices. Villanova University abruptly canceled a week-long workshop run by performer and gay activist Tim Miller. Miller has taught and lectured at universities nationwide on the process of self-discovery and of America's diversity. Villanova President Reverend Donahue said that Miller's performance went against the university's values. The curtain remained closed on the performance and a very offended Tim Miller. Cemetery care worker Sandy Stife woke up to a disturbing surprise at the Allen Batch Cemetery earlier this week. The bodies of dozens of dead chickens were dumped at Pennsylvania Cemetery. Officials found over 20 shopping bags filled with dead chickens whose heads have been cut off. Similar incidents have taken place at several other cemeteries near Reading and Mount Penn. Humane Society officials claim the chickens may have been killed as a part of a religious ritual. Police are still searching for the beheaded chicken dumpers. 
That was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Bethany. Republican presidential candidate Rick Santorum is relentless in his verbal attacks on President Barack Obama. In Ohio, earlier this week, Santorum went after the president for limiting energy production and claimed Obama wants to frighten people about new oil exploration. He also said that President Obama's policies were based on a phony theology inferring that Obama was an environmentalist who was not a Christian. Three professional skiers were killed by an avalanche in the Cascade Mountains in Wisconsin earlier this week. The avalanche was triggered by another skier causing the three experienced skiers to tumble down a 2,000-foot drop. Head judge of the extreme sport, Jim Jack, was one of the three deaths. The other victims both worked in the skiing resort. The community of skiers will hold a memorial service later this week. The infamous French, French Quarter in New Orleans was packed with people this past weekend for Mardi Gras. The colorful and busy weekend recorded around 200 arrests of teenagers alone. The city's new curfew policy requires children under the age of 16 must now be accompanied by an adult if visiting the French Quarter after 8 p.m. The strict policy was passed in January in order to keep the teens away from alcohol, nudity, and violence. Most parents of the community are supportive of the new regulations. Let's go to Sarah for your trip around the world. Elephant carcasses lay scattered by the hundreds of Buba Nahida National Park in Cameroon, Africa. An armed gang of poachers have killed nearly 300 elephants for their tusks since mid-January. Poachers use the tusks to make ivory and then smuggle the ivory to markets in Asia and Europe. The money from ivory sales funds arms for use in regional conflicts. According to officials, the government has launched a crackdown on the poachers in order to save the threatened elephant population. Inside the prison of Apacata, Mexico, over 40 inmates were killed and 30 escaped. Officials say a riot broke out between drug rival cartels. Two Zeta drug gang leaders were among the prisoners who escaped. 18 guards are under investigation. Authorities are offering a reward of $800,000 for information on the escapees. Tensions in buildings over Iran's nuclear power and analysis believe military conflict could be the next step. Iran threatens to close a major passageway for majority of the world's oil. However, Tehran insists that its nuclear program pursues energy for only civilian purposes and not for military use. President Barack Obama and allied countries, including Israel, are not buying Iran's story. That was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. If you use Safari on your laptop or use an Apple Eye device to surf the web, listen up. Google was recently caught bypassing the privacy settings on Apple's web browser, letting advertisers track users in unintended ways. When the Wall Street Journal published their investigation, Google backpedaled and quietly discontinued the use of tracking code. Google admitted to using a loophole to target ads. Although no personal information was collected or stored, the search giant claims it was an inadvertent screw-up. Late last week, Apple announced the presence of another big cat in their corner. OS X Mountain Lion, Apple's next major operating system, is slated for a summer release date. Many of the new features in Mountain Lion are directly inspired by the iPad and iPhone. Apps like iCal are being renamed Calendar to correspond with their iOS counterparts. If you want to get your hands on an early copy, you will need to pay up. Mountain Lion is only available as a developer preview right now, and it costs $99 per year to be a Mac developer. I'd wait for this official summer release if I were you. That's all I have for now. I'll stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now back to Sarah and Bethany at the news desk. Let's go to Felicia for your weekly entertainment news. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your entertainment news. Chris Brown and Rihanna have once again created a media frenzy. The two pop artists have decided to collaborate on two singles three years after Brown pleaded guilty to a felony assault against Rihanna. The songs are titled Birthday Cake by Rihanna and Turn Up the Music by Chris Brown. Both of the singles have remixes which feature one another. There have been plenty of media speculation about the two reconciling and supposedly dating. The jury is still out. Also, be sure to tune in to ESPN this Friday at 7 p.m. to check out the Celebrity All-Star Game. Celebs such as comedian Kevin Hart, reality star Vinny from the Jersey Shore, rapper J. Cole, and many more are scheduled to play. Well, that's all I have for your entertainment news. Be sure to tune in next week for your weekly update. Now let's go to Melissa for this week's Person of the Week. Hi, I am Melissa Webb, and it is a pleasure to have Rizwan Ishmael here as Person of the Week. Thank you for being here. 
Thank you for having me, Melissa, and it's a pleasure is all mine to be here as your person of the week. As an undergraduate, you were in many things here at Cabrini. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so as an undergrad, I try to get involved as much as possible. So for example, I was an RA for four years, and you were one of my residents, which was a pleasure. I was in student ambassador for three years. I was involved in, as an orientation leader for a year, Wolfenton Center, took part in the service trips to Ecuador, West Virginia, organized pickup soccer, co-ed soccer, captain intramural teams. How were you able to manage all of that? I think, surprisingly, you think you're not able to do as much as you think you can, and you just keep doing it, and somehow you amazingly find time to do it all. So the key, key component is time management. And that's my one word of advice to students is get involved, do as much as you want. And I think my one regret as an undergrad is not getting involved in more stuff at the fresh, as, a, as a freshman. I think it was a great idea for you to actually pick up all those things. I mean, your face is everywhere on the campus, on the shuttle. Um, you walk into admissions, we see your face everywhere. So it was great. So you're a graduate student here now, and what are your plans? Yes, yeah, so I'm doing. I'm currently a graduate student here at Cabrini in the Master of Science and Organizational Leadership program. And I'm thinking of, with the Spanish from the undergrad level, taking that and doing international business. So I graduate with the MSOL in 2013 and get involved in international business and maybe pick up also French and Portuguese to have me be a little bit more employable. Well, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Melissa. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Have a great week, Cabrini.